Hi, my name is Justin Loke. I'm a um, haematologist here, uh, working in the Cancer Research UK Clinical Trials Unit at the University of Birmingham in Birmingham, UK, and also with the Queen Elizabeth Hospital here at the Centre for Clinical Haematology. So one of the um, really important questions in the last few years has been what are the outcomes of patients with TP53 mutated AML? And the general uh, consensus in the community has been that they um, unfortunately have an extremely adverse uh, prosthetic feature, especially even after intensive chemotherapy. And such that some have considered an allogeneic stem cell transplant as to be a uh, unnecessary um, intensive treatment for these patients and really question the value of this um, uh, strategy in, in this cohort of patients. However, it's not been clear um, uh, what are the um, other associated prognostic features associated with this form of leukemia and what the transplant uh, variables that might affect the outcomes of these patients are. And so um, together with the acute leukemia working part of the EBMT, uh, we've looked at the outcomes of TP53 mutated AML who have had an allogeneic stem cell transplants. And we have considered all patients in a CR1 with either intermediate risk or adverse risk cytogenetics. And in this uh, large registry uh, analysis, we identified 179 patients uh, with a TP53 mutated ML and 601 uh, patients with unmutated TP53 ML. And first of all, we um, identified a number of associated adverse cytogenetic features including those of complex karyotype abnormalities in the chromosome 17p, which is where the TP53 gene uh, resides, and also um, complex uh, karyotype and monosomal karyotypes. So all adverse uh, prognostic features uh, in their own right, but more importantly, um, uh, identify some biological uh, variables which are associated with this form of leukemia. Then in this large set of over 700 patients, we looked to see if TP53 mutations were indeed a poor prognostic feature, indeed after uh, even an allergenic stem cell transplant. And we found that this was indeed the case uh, with patients with TP53 mutated AML have an overall survival of approximately 35% uh, um, after stem cell transplants, um, whilst those without uh, uh, overall survival over 60% at two years. And this is driven predominantly from an uh, increase in relapse risk. So having identified this, we went on to look to see what variables are associated uh, with uh, 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 this poor prognosis in the TP53 mutated cohort itself for 179 patients. And we found that the two major variables which affected overall survival were abnormalities in um, chromosome 17p, alongside that of complex karyotype. And this was once again largely driven by changes in um, uh, relapse risk. And indeed, this was independent, um, regardless of uh, other transplant or uh, patient related features. And we found no other uh, variable, um, including uh, differences in transplant conditioning regimens, GVHD prophylaxis, which affected the outcomes of uh, TP53 uh, mutated AML uh, in this cohort. However, the impact of uh, changes in chromosome 17P or complex karyotype was such that we could identify a cohort of around 40 to 50 patients who did not have either of these abnormalities, who indeed have a very favorable outcome at two years of over 60% overall survival, whilst patients uh, uh, with um, uh, uh, either or, uh, or both of these mutations had overall survival only around 24%. So the co-occurrence and the additive poor prognostic implication of uh, 17p abnormalities alongside that of TP53 mutations um, underline the increasingly recognized importance of biallelic uh, disruption of TP53, which is now increasingly seen in uh, a number of other hematological malignancies as well. Thank you for listening.